From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Fast moving consumer goods manufacturer RCL Foods launched a new pet food manufacturing facility in Ranfontein earlier this month. Megan van Vanguard has a story. Through the establishment of the 1,500 square meter facility, which employs around 700 people, the company aims to take a greater share in the 5 billion rand a year South African pet food market. RCL Foods Groceries Business Unit Executive Francois Roots tells us more. About two years ago, um, we realized there's a gap in the market that South African market is very, very, there's almost no dif uh, um, dif differentiation or different propositions. It's all round and brown, as we call it. So we started two years ago with a whole project to start you know, investigating what are the capabilities and the recipes worldwide to bring that to South Africa and to actually implement it here. So under 50 million rand, so it's green fields project. We started with an old soccer field. We decided to invest in a vertical um, manufacturing site, three extruders, a total capacity of about 12,000 tons per pit foot per month, versus our current about 7,000, so more than 60% um, increase. And then obviously we invested in new technologies as well. You know, um, we've got great capabilities. We can do things like gravy coating um, pellets, uh, just a quick explanation is we take a pellet, we, we coat it with gravy powder, and all you do is add a bit of warm water and a few seconds later you've got a very rich gravy um, sauce with your, with your pellets. Other things that we're looking at is um, fish meat inclusion. Fish meat obviously is a great source of protein, okay? Unlike the normal pet food carcass meal they use, it's highly digestible for the, for the dog and as well as um, extremely um, palatable. Then you're looking at things like um, semi more skibbles, you know, it's high in protein, very tasteful. We look at um, milky kibbles, high in calcium for puppies. And then um, veg extracts that we use. Um, as you know, dogs are actually omnivores, so vegetables are important for them as well. And it's great health benefits, okay, that we can actually um, introduce to the dog. So, how can I say? So the pet parent will be happy that we're presenting, but the real benefits are for the dogs and the cats. RCL Foods currently holds 40% of the retail sector and will focus on gaining clientele in the vet market. And with the new facility, the company's pet food production increased by 60%, from 7,000 tonnes a month to 12,000 tonnes a month. With what we've done here, we're going to lead the industry in South Africa. If you look forward, I think innovation will be the passport factor going forward. So we, keep on, we need to keep on innovating. Um, this is the first round. We'll have another set of innovations next six to 12 months. But innovation will be the um, area of growth going forward. Our treat market in South Africa is totally under-indexed. You know? So currently about 8% of our total treat market of 5 billion rand is represented by treats. If you compare that with America and Europe, 25% of the total market is in the treat area. So we're totally under-indexed. So there's a huge amount of new launches that we're going to um, uh, uh, take to market into this area and to try to get that same kind of ratio. And so that we believe there's huge opportunity in that area. RCL Foods consumer business MD Scott Pittman said the company aimed to double its profit from the pet food market within the next three years and would achieve this goal by continually implementing new innovations. So obviously the, the capability that a plant like this brings to us is a capability for a huge differentiation of our dog food and cat food from the other brands in the South African market. So in that respect, what you, what you look for in a business with promise is something that has a product which is not only relevant to the consumer and to the pet, but also different from the others. And in that respect, we, we are applying one of the six technologies to each of our different brands that will make that brand either more flavorful, more visually differentiated, more palatable, um, um, or more aromatic. And uh, in that respect, will be preferred by pets in South Africa. And when it's preferred by pets in South Africa, you start winning market share because the other guy's uh, food is less preferred. And that's how it adds to our bottom line. Other news making headlines. Himoinsa sees demand growth in construction and mining in Africa. And CSIR makes progress on first African climate change model. Power equipment manufacturer Himoinsa has expanded its local African teams and partners to meet the growing demand for custom-designed power systems and generators in the construction and mining sectors. So obviously the sectors face some unique challenges in terms of the African environment. Um, we've got some very high ambient conditions or some very low ambient conditions. Um, so technical challenges around things like quality of fuel, uh, dusty environments, 
uh, and in some, some cases some high altitudes as well. So Himoense's approach is to engineer the right product for the application as well as for the environment. Um, so we will look at the project from the start, um, our design and engineering teams between Southern Africa and Himoense in Spain um, will look at the specific output, what is the client's requirement in terms of things like efficiencies um, uh, and where it's located uh, and design the product accordingly uh, for these specific conditions. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is making progress in developing the first Africa-based Earth System model to provide reliable projections of the potential impact of climate change on the continent. The CSR is contributing to the assessment reports of the International Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, and in fact we have no less than three CSR researchers serving as coordinating lead authors or lead authors on the assessment report number six of the IPCC. Our continent, we are particularly vulnerable to climate change variability and change, and that's even if the Paris Agreement is adhered to, even if the very strict 1.5 um, uh, increase in temperature is achievable. And this is because in the African um, subtropics, we're already seeing that the, that the temperature changes of, of greater magnitude than the global average. And they're projected to rise at about twice the global rate. That's Krimo Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. Thank <laughs> you.